So they'll say y varies directly with x. Okay, so the very part is k. Directly means multiply. And then y and x you have as well. So the equation is just, right, bring that y down, y equals varies means k, multiply times x. You could put parentheses. But you don't have to. You can just write y equals kx. So that equation looks a whole lot like y equals 10x plus b, right? y equals kx is the same damn equation. You guys lose your minds over this equation. You're like, oh my god, it's so hard. It's not. It's easier than slope-intercept form. So don't make it any harder than that. There is no b in y equals kx. They just switch the k from an m to a k, so again, no big deal. It means that this equation, if you graph it, will always go through zero, zero. Every single time it will go through zero, zero. So if you're looking at a graph of these things and you want to know if it is a direct variation, if it goes through the, y, uh, the origin, zero, zero, it is a direct variation equation. So if we take y equals kx and we solve that for k, all you got to do is divide both sides by x, like that. And then k equals y over x. So if I'm making flashcards for this, because my god, you should all be making flashcards. You gotta remember all of this math and all of geometry to take SAT. Okay, so just like have a little moment with yourself there and be like, holy shit, I got a lot of math to remember. So making things like flashcards will help you. Direct variation on one side, y equals kx on the other. You could have k on one side of the flashcard, y over x on the other. Remember, you guys, y over x is just like a slope. Right? Y in the sky, Y goes on top in the slope equation. In direct variation, Y also goes on top. So it's Y in the sky, Y on top, over X. Always, always. So two equations you got to remember, Y equals KX and K equals Y over X. The last thing you have to remember is right here, this constant of variation. That's all that K is just called, the constant of variation. Also called the slope, but they always call it constant variation because they like to use big words that confuse you. <coughs> constant of variation. Because so I'll ask you to write the direct variation equation and find the constant of variation. You need to know that they're looking for k when they ask you to find the constant of variation. Okay, so that's just kind of the beginning part there. Now we start to do problems with this direct variation. So one group of problems they'll give you is with tables of value. And what I like to do is just add a third column to the table. So that third column is y over x. y over x is the same thing as k, right? It's just a slope. They're just using k. So when we look at the third column and we divide y over x, you just want to make sure that you get the same number every time. So 2 divided by 1 is 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 8 divided by 4 is also 2. If you get the same number each time when you divide y by x, that means it is a direct variation. And then k is 2. Because they say determine whether y varies directly with x. The answer to that question is yes. Yes, it does. If so, what is the constant of variation and the function rule? Okay, they want to know yes or no. Is it a direct variation? 
Second thing they want to know is what k is. Third thing they want to know is what the rule, the function rule is. So we got question number one answered. <coughs> question number two is what's k? Well, k is two. We already figured that out from here, here, and here. Right? Got the same thing each time, so that's what k is. <coughs> and then the third thing, all you got to do is plug that two in. 2y equals kx, so instead of the k, write 2. So y equals 2x. That's all you got to do. So if you get different numbers when you divide that third column, y by x, then you don't have to answer 2 and 3. You're done with the problem. Okay? So we'll make our additional column here as well. So 4 divided by 1 is 4, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 11 divided by 3 <coughs> is 2.6 repeating or 2.7 rounded. So all we have to do is answer that very first question. 1 is a no, so 2 and 3. Not applicable. And A, you don't even have to write it. Just so if you know, if you get confused, like where the hell that thing go, two and three, you know that. <clears throat> so if you get a no, it's an easier problem. So if you think, right, I'm trying to encourage you guys to think how I think when I put problems on your test. Do you think I'm going to put one like A or B on your test? Problem A, for sure, right? Because B is kind of a waste. You don't do anything. Right? That would be me being tricky and trying to screw with your head. And then I get a bunch of people that are identified two and three even though you don't have to. So if you're thinking about the kind of problem I'm going to put on the test, it's probably going to be like A. <coughs> okay. So now we're looking at equations and determining whether they are direct variation equations. So to make sure they are direct variation equations, it's got to look like y equals kx. So there's no extra stuff after the x. So the first step in doing this, we just got to solve for k. So many times algebra students two students struggle because they don't know what to do when, like what to do first. Well, solve for k tells you, right? So if I, or I meant to write solve for y, sorry. Fix this, please. My bad. I just looked over there and shocked and horror. You want to solve for y is what it meant. Get the y by itself. So if I look here, I've got a 3 in front of the y. So all i got to do is divide the 3 out. And I've got the y by itself. So this one looks like y equals 7 thirds x. Right, I can also write this, just so you guys get used to seeing the different ways. Those two are the exact same equations, right? I can put that x in the numerator next to the 7. It works the same way. So determine whether y goes directly with x. Considered last names R through Z. Please come down for your school photos in the auditorium. R through Z. So, do the two purple highlights look just like one another? Yeah, they sure do, right? Doesn't matter if this K thing is a fraction, a decimal, just if there's no crap after the X, that's what makes it a direct variation. So, it again asks us the same questions. Determine whether y varies directly with x. So that first question would be a yes. Second question, what is the constant of variation? Second question is just k equals 7 over 3. Right? Because we already did kind of the third piece where we're writing the equation. We did that when we solved for y. How many people remember to bring a water bottle? 
Okay. Make sure it's really hard to drink water when you got a mask on. Obviously you can, just to be a smart ass, but um, you try to drink water, like pay attention to drinking water, because you get home and you're just totally parched, and it's really bad for you, especially for teenagers, like your skin will get all jacked up, and they get jacked up enough wearing these damn masks. As you know, we'll all be fighting the mask acne here coming up soon. My nose is already sore from the same mask, so good job. Good okay, we're going to take this one next. So again, all I have to do on that problem is divide each and every part by 7 to get the y by itself, right? So you can always think, like, what do I divide by? Divide by whatever's in front of the variable. So when I divide that 7 out, I get y equals 14 divided by 7 is 2x. 7 divided by 7 is plus 1. So again, I'm thinking about that direct variation. Because that goes through, it's got to be, it is not a direct variation equation because there's extra crap after the x. So it is it a direct variation? The answer number one, no. So two and three don't matter, right? When you get one like that. <clears throat> so I'm way more likely to ask you a question like A than I am on B on a quiz. Again, you're trying to figure out the questions I ask so that you can study less. Who wouldn't want to do that? So try 5 or 2a on your own, 5x plus 3y equals 0. This one, it works out to be a direct variation, so determine if it is. Tell me what k is, and then tell me the equation. And then raise your virtual hand at home and I'll be able to tell in person because you guys will stop writing. Yes, it does. Do your virtual hand raise at home when you're done. for a couple more of those virtual hand raises. I'll do it on the board and see what's going on. Okay, looks good. So we're determining whether y varies directly with x. We're going to do that by isolating the y. First step I want to do is subtracting 5x from both sides. Then, we've got to get rid of the 3 in front of the y. So y equals negative 5 thirds x. So does y vary directly with x? Yes. Here's my direct variation equation. Yes, it does vary. And what's k? k equals negative 5 over 3. You can write that as a decimal, that's fine too. If it's a fraction you reduce, you've got to reduce that fraction. So, look at b up there, y equals x over 9. 
Thumbs up if you think it's a direct variation equation. Thumbs down if you think it's not. So all of you at home can take your virtual hands down. So thumbs up, direct variation. Thumbs down, not. Don't be influenced by others you see on the screen because a lot of you are wrong. Because I saw some people freaking out about it, right? Yes, Anna, you are right. Good, good. <clears throat> so it is a direct variation, right? So all this is, if I look at the... At this time, any 10th graders that have been being called down this morning can come down now. Any remaining 10th graders for your school pictures, please. You can also write it like that, y equals 1 over 9x, right? So it doesn't matter if that x is in the numerator or next to the fraction. So this is a direct variation equation. There it is. 2 would be a yes. And it's kind of weird with the x over 9, but it's just 1x over 9. So the last thing would just be the k equals 1 over 9. Okay. So again, don't make it any harder than that. And then I'll show you the one example you met soon you're gone. <coughs> okay, so you'll definitely see one of these on your quiz. So a smart student would get your other color out and write on quiz. So they say, suppose y varies directly with x. So that just means y equals kx. They're telling you to use a proportion. So that means you're just setting up two fractions and you're going to cross multiply. No big deal. So when we set up that proportion, we want to use the k equals y over x. So always when you set up a proportion, y to the sky. Y is always going to be on top. So we set this thing up. 9 over negative 15 equals y is on top. We don't know the second y, but we do know the second x. <coughs> so if I want to know what k is, do you have a question? Okay. Yeah, I saw it. You were like with me and then all of a sudden gone. So first y over first x, right here and here. And then we don't know if that's why what is the y. That's why he wrote just straight up y. And then the 21 just comes right there. Okay. It's good. That's why I like to have you guys in person because I can actually tell when you're confused. <coughs> so all we got to do now is cross multiply. Realize as well, so they're asking us, well, I'm always going to ask you those three questions. Is it a direct variation, like what's a direct variation equation, what's k, and then in this case, you've got to find the new y value. Please, this is Lex, and Erasmus. Yes, if there are any ninth graders that missed school pictures in October and would like to get their pictures taken, please come down to the auditorium. Any ninth graders that have not had pictures taken. So, we got k already identified, right? 9 over negative 15. Because k is y over x. So it's k, 9 over negative 15. Well, you've got to reduce that fraction. So if you have your graphing calculator, plus it out. And we'll start cranking on those. So you at home would plus out the graphing calculator. Just to remember how to reduce those fractions. It's one of those super handy things on the graphing calculators. So all you got to do is 9, just hit the divide for a fraction, negative 15 like that. So just 9 divided by 15. And you hit math, right below alpha. At home you can tell because that button's red on my calculator. And then enter twice. So that will reduce your fraction. Negative 3 fifths is what k is. So we can say that. And then we just have to cross multiply now. So negative 15y 
equals 9 times 21 is 189. Always double check that kind of crap, right? 9 times 21. I'm just doing that in my head. I just did a last period, so I remember these things. 9 times 21, 189 is what I said. That's correct. And then, last step to solve for the new y is to divide by negative 15. So you get y equals whatever 189 divided by negative 15. So in your graphing calculator, if you multiply 9 times 21, you got the 189. To divide by negative 15, you can just hit divide. Your graphing calculator will take whatever your last answer was and divide that by whatever you want. In this case, negative 15. Just makes it easy. So negative 12.6. Okay, so direct variation equation, right? Here's my k. So all I have to do is write negative y equals negative three fifths x. So we have our direct variation equation. We have our k value. And then the third thing is answering this, what is the new y? The new y is negative 12.6. So set your, how do you do this, right? If you like to write steps for how to do these problems, not a bad idea. First thing you do is write a proportion using y over x, cross multiply and solve, identify your k, write your direct variation. Right, so set up that proportion, y over x, cross multiply and solve, that gives you answer number three here. You already identify k by doing y over x, so reduce that fraction if you need to, which I did by doing the negative 3 fifths, and then just plug that into the equation and write the equation. So this kind of problem just wrecks people, and there's no reason for it to wreck you guys, right? We're just making that proportion, y over x, cross multiply, solve, identify k, write the equation. That's it. All right. Try one of these on your own, okay? So if you're sitting there have no effing clue what to do, put your hand up in person, put your hand up at home. Again, first step, do y over x and make your proportion, cross multiply and solve. y over x for your proportion. Should get y is 60. Yeah, thank you. Raise your virtual hand when you're done. I'll show you guys at home what the classroom looks like just to embarrass all my in-person students. They will I try to hide from you at home, but it's 
I mean, like it's people are very spread out, so as far as whether or not you feel safe, you should feel safe. No worries. Okay. So I'm going to start to do it. So you can take your virtual hands down. We get 3y equals 180 after we cross multiply. Divide both sides by 3. So y equals 60. That's one of our three answers. Here's our k value right here. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I don't really care which one's 1, 2, or 3. I'm just looking for these three answers. So we did y. Your k value I'm going to do next. k, 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then just writing your equation, y equals 5x. Okay. Just help you to kind of keep everything straight with these kind of problems by always doing, right, I always want you to find k, I always want you to find the equation, then everything will stay nice and organized in your brain, which is a bonus. Two more slides. All right, so, story problem method, read, don't write. Salesperson commission varies directly with sales. For 1000 in sales, the commission is 85 bucks. What is the commission for 2300 in sales? Okay. So, commission varies directly with sales. I'm going to use X for sales because sometimes S's and Y's get mixed up. I'm going to use C for commission. Varies is K. Okay, so we're starting to read and underline now. So we're identifying some variables. We have a thousand in sales. Commission is 85, and we want to know what the commission is for 2,300 in sales. So you got to write down almost the entire problem. But these are good sort of problems to put down because they're straightforward, and I find that students can solve them accurately. Get this one right on your quiz. So first thing I'm going to do is write this equation. So C commission, we already identified the variable. Step four is to write the equation. So C equals K times X. Now, to solve, I think it's easiest to do a proportion. So I'm going to divide both sides by X. So I'm going to use C on top, commission on top, sales on bottom when I make my proportion. So 85 over 1,000 equals, we don't know what the commission is for 2,300 in sales. So then all I got to do is cross multiply. So 85 times 2,300, don't want to do that in my head. is 195,500. So we get 1,000 C equals 195,500. And then when we divide by 1,000, all that happens is that decimal moves one, two, three places over. So we're going to get 95.5 which I'll double check in the calculator like always. So, we get C equals 195.5. Don't forget your units, dollar sign in this case. So I'm going to do 195,500 divided by 1,000 in the calculator real quick. So just hit divide 1,000, 195.5. Just confirming we got that correct answer. So our direct variation equation, 
That's a fun one. So here's, we found the new value we were looking for. We know our k value is 85 over 1,000. But let's reduce that fraction in the graphing calculator. So just do 85 divided by 1,000. Math, enter, enter. So that reduces to 17 over 200. So that's our k value. And then just to write the equation, it's just y equals 17 over 200 x. Yeah? So when you first write the equation, why is it x over x? Like it's k x over x, I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah. Here, let me do this. So when I first write the equation, that's what I want you to think of. Just that. Okay? And then, that's why I always try to do different colors. So I'm just solving for k to go from there to there. Because that's how I want to set up my proportion. That's all. And because I didn't use different colors right there, that's why it was confusing, right? So that's why I try to do different colors all the time. <coughs> So that's an important thing for you guys at home too, right? Realize that using those different colors help you distinguish the different sets so you know what the hell is going on. Because that's always nice. Alright, read, don't write. Number of calories varies directly with the mass of cheese. If 50 grams of cheese contains 200 calories, how many calories are in 70 grams of cheese? Okay, so what do you write down? Calories vary directly with mass. We got 50 grams of cheese, 200 calories. We want to know how many calories are in 70 grams of cheese. So I'll give you a sec, write that down. You can try to write just a generic equation as well. We're going to use C for calories. M for mass. So we read, did step one, read, don't write. Step two, read and highlight. Step three, identify the variable. Step four, write your equation. So we get C equals varies, remember, means K. Directly means multiply. So we want to figure out our proportions, so we solve for k. We do that by dividing m on both sides. So when we set up our proportion, we want to have calories on top, mass on bottom. Again, do you have to do it this way? I could have mass on top, calories on bottom. It's just going to make more sense in the long run if you do it like this. So calories for cheese, first one we got is 200 or 50 grams of cheese. We don't know how many calories are in 70 grams of cheese. So we do that super disturbing problem later on. That it's pretty, it's going to come up sooner than you think in a week or two, where we use what's called a linear regression to determine how much cheese all of you pay to eat per year. And it is disgusting. And I am included in that big thing because it's like multiple. If you just think about the volume of cheese, it is so disturbing. And you just think about eating it in a single sitting. That's the disturbing part. Okay, so 50C equals uh, 14 with three zeros. 2 times 7 is 14, and I know I have three zeros because there's three zeros left. Then if we divide by 50 on both sides, divide by 50, 14,000 divided by 50 is 280 calories. 
right? So if you got an Apple Watch, who's got an Apple Watch? Yeah. What's your calorie goal? I don't know. Uh, doesn't know. Calorie goal? Do you know? I'm looking. Did it look good? I don't Did, know. What's your? I don't have one. You don't, I don't have one. I don't have one. Anyways, if you set like to burn 280 calories because you want to eat 70 grams of cheese, that's like a yeah. probably like a 45 minute walk to work off that cheese. Yeah, well, are you vegetarian? No, I'm not vegetarian. Oh, uh, lactose intolerant, that's lactose and always cream for you, though. <coughs> but yeah, that's a lot of freaking, like, you got to walk forever to get rid of just 70 grams of cheese, which is not that much cheese. Okay, so that's all we got. The homework is posted already. I will tell you guys in person what it is, just so you know. Homework is page 71, 7 through 23. Uh, page 71. When you guys do your homework, just put your name, first name, last name, and your class period on there. Because sometimes I jump between classes and it's just easier for me to grade like that. It's not like a steadfast requirement or anything, but it's just kind of handy if you do that. All right, those of us in person are going to take a little math break, go outside, get these things off their faces for a little bit. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Remember, all you people at home, you got to finish and turn it into homework before you go. You can have your cameras off, no problem. I'm going to close and lock the door so you can leave all your stuff. You don't have to worry about somebody stealing it. Let's go. Apparently, we will not have fire drills until next week. So we're going to go out back door right there, so just go around down the stairs. Why is it different like calculus or here or something? Oh,
<laughs> We're back. Ask questions if you got them. Drink water, all of you people. You literally have to remind yourself to drink water, otherwise you'll just be dying by the time you get home. Claustrophobic, so this is all like claustrophobia producing. Mm -hmm. I start lashing out and start smacking kids and I uh, can take that thing off. What's that? Okay, see you later. All right, Savannah, see ya. See that my glasses fog up. I can't get to them. Um, yeah, I was walking from the track to that bike here. I was right. working on school. I'm like, I couldn't see. I was basically like... <laughs> you got to pull them down on the nose like the old guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we can. It's annoying. But we have to have like the seating charts exactly where we are in case Sophie gets COVID and there's three people around her after quarantine. And if I wear the mask, I don't. Wait to work. See how stupid I look. Never thought I'd have to teach looking like this, I'll tell you that much. Because I don't think you guys, you probably won't be get vaccinated until like end of summer, right? That we'll see. Biden claims he's going to roll it out much faster, so hopefully that's the case. <coughs> Indeed, it is 1 p.m. Inauguration for Biden. Oh. Wednesday. Uh, noon? Uh, they said one, I heard. Who knows? Yeah, for sure. Twenty thousand troops, so that'll be fine. That DC is so shut down. Like nobody, people who live there are getting pissed because they can't do anything. Trump's leaving Wednesday morning, not going to inauguration, so there won't be any of that weirdness. He should go, man up, but whatever. Yes, hopefully you guys will never live through another political time in your lives that's as crazy as this. And then say, yeah, could have been worse. It could have been worse. Oh, it can always be worse. It wasn't that far off, honestly. Very close. You know? Yeah. Not that far off.
Hey, yeah, so you guys will just take pictures of your homework just like always and submit it on Schoology. Same old, same old. Anybody want me to display it up here? Do you guys care? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I've been submitting my homework in like the PDF. Okay. Yep. If I have issues, I would just send you an email and let you know. I appreciated that one extra credit when you used to do every other odd and I didn't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little overachieving, Maggie. Unintentionally overachieving. I didn't know. Do you know if we're allowed to go off campus for lunch? You are. You're a junior, right? Because yeah. I have a couple of talks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are. And you get longer, too, right? Because you get the 10 minute pass on the front of either side. your dad? No, yeah. My friend broke her collarbone when she was like three, falling off a bench in the school. My dad also got hit by a car when he was 19 and now he has screws in his knee. Fine. I've had more broken like 14, 15 bones and over 100 stitches. So. Now, for how clumsy I am, like, I try to fall all the time. I've never needed stitches or broken a bone, which I'm so grateful for. The worst thing I did is, when I was younger, I dislocated this elbow three times. Oh, You know Elle Tapper? Yeah. She oh, broke yeah. her arm two times in the exact same place. Yeah, that's see, that's not supposed to happen. It's supposed what? to get stronger where you break it. Well, I'm going to do it. Tell my mom that she broke it. Bro, she's going to tell her that I'm like, oh, what do you mean? I remember, like, right before we went, right before we went, this all started and we were like still in normal school. Didn't Sydney have a black eye? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she um, was punching my sister. And she <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. gave herself a black eye? <laughs> no, so they were like using boxing gloves. Oh, and yeah. And then we um, were at a friend's house and then she tackled her to the couch, but the couch gap didn't have cushions. And she banged her head like right on the bone on the side. Oh, yeah. So she got
So when you guys check in in the morning, what do they do? Do they just check your temperature? No, no, they just check your temperature. Yeah, your parents have to fill out a form in the morning, and then when you come in, they have to check your temperature. They just check on the computer if you have it. <laughs> yeah, they're not putting up with any of that crap. We were all kind of just like staring at each other, like, should we go to the front? And we all kind of collectively decided. You're like, ah, no. Yeah, they were like, I need to go to the beach. Oh my gosh, I need to go. Yeah. And Alicia and Carmen had passed the same one, so we just went to the front of the building. I know. I walked all the way from nearby to Amal and, like, or to the front of the building. And I was just like, my God, I forgot how long that was. Yeah. I walked from the bike rack, the long way around the school to the front, then down to the sea hall. Luckily, I've had all my teachers before, so I know where all my classrooms are. Yeah, that's nice. I've had the same thing before. You have pin week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have nice. yeah. Oh, yeah. That was Did you have a uh, halo in your class? No. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately. You know. You have halo. Yeah, I have no idea like what the requirements for that class were, but like... <laughs> Yeah. It was the weirdest collection of kids. Like, yeah. There's the people who don't, there was people who don't try ever, and people who were like, do their work all the time, and I'm like, Yeah. I know, they talked about the criteria of selection for that class, and I taught this double black algebra class once years ago that was totally awesome. No, it's actually it was kids that really struggled in algebra ended up loving it because they had time to learn it, understand it, could do all their homework in class. It was nice. They loved it. Question? Could you explain number 15? Yeah, I was just about that. Let me take a look. You're fine. And then when you play rap, it reminds me of when we were freshmen and we had some special. Marco. Yeah. Good old Marco. I think he, I don't know if he still does, but he used to work at the McDonald's. So, yeah. I oh, yeah. The one right down there, right? Yeah. And you can tell he recognized it, but he didn't have Ah, Marco. I hate recognizing people. He's so awkward. Oh, yeah. I was like, if you and Oz had come along, I would have come to the store, like, who are you? And then I'd be like, we're not really that close, but I would feel awkward. Yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the store. What? I was so close to remembering to stop and I didn't. Right after, like, the car before we left.